You're listening to Crater Community Radio. And now, here is a classic scene from the Goodnight Flagstaff series. Harry sat there, aware that every head in the great hall had turned to look at him. He was stunned. He felt numb. He was surely dreaming he had not heard correctly. There was no applause. A buzzing, as though of angry bees, was starting to fill the hall. Some students were standing up to get a better look at Harry as he sat frozen in his seat. Up at the top table, Professor McGonagall had got to her feet and swept past Ludo Bagman and Professor Karkaroff to whisper urgently to Professor Dumbledore, who bent his ear toward her, frowning slightly. Harry turned to Ron and Hermione. Beyond them, he saw the long Gryffindor table, all watching him, open-mouthed. "'I didn't put my name in,' Harry said blankly. "'You know I didn't.' Both of them stared just as blankly back. At the top table, Professor Dumbledore had straightened up, nodding to Professor McGonagall. "'Harry Potter,' he called again. "'Harry, up here, if you please.' "'Go on,' Hermione whispered, giving Harry a slight push. Harry got to his feet, trod on the hem of his robes, and stumbled slightly. He set off up the gap between the Gryffindor and Hufflepuff tables. It felt like an immensely long walk. The top table didn't seem to be getting any nearer at all, and he could feel hundreds and hundreds of eyes upon him, as though each were a searchlight. The buzzing grew louder and louder. After what seemed like an hour, he was right in front of Dumbledore, feeling the stares of all the teachers upon him. "'Well, through the door, Harry,' said Dumbledore. He wasn't smiling. Harry moved off along the teacher's table. Hagrid was seated right at the end. He did not wink at Harry or wave or give any of his usual signs of greeting. He looked completely astonished and stared at Harry as he passed, like everyone else. Harry went through the door out of the great hall and found himself in a smaller room lined with paintings of witches and wizards. A handsome fire was roaring in the fireplace opposite him. The faces in the portraits turned to look at him as he entered. He saw a wizened witch flit out of the frame of her picture and into the one next to it, which contained a wizard with a walrus moustache. The wizened witch started whispering in his ear. Victor Crumb, Cedric Diggory, and Fleur de la Cur were grouped around the fire. They looked strangely impressive, silhouetted against the flames. Crumb, hunched up and brooding, was leaning against the mantelpiece slightly apart from the other two. Cedric was standing with his hands behind his back, staring into the fire. Fleur de la Cur looked around when Harry walked in and threw back her sheet of long silvery hair. "'What is it?' she said. "'Do they want us back in the hall?' She thought he had come to deliver a message. Harry didn't know how to explain what had just happened. He just stood there, looking at the three champions. It struck him how very tall all of them were. There was a sound of scurrying feet behind him and Ludo Bagman entered the room. He took Harry by the arm and led him forward. Extraordinary, he muttered, squeezing Harry's arm. Absolutely extraordinary. Gentlemen, lady, he added, approaching the fireside and addressing the other three. May I introduce, incredible though it may seem, the fourth Triwizard Champion.